Hi there, welcome to another episode of Hack a Week TV, where this week I'm building an audio amplifier from the versatile little 8-pin dip chip called the LM386. It's an audio amplifier that puts out about a half a watt of power. You can use this to amplify an MP3 player, you could make a, a headphone amplifier out of a guitar, small guitar amplifier. Um, lots of little versatile things. It's a pretty cool little circuit, easy to build, and now I'll take you through the whole process and we'll show you what the waveform looks like on the oscilloscope with my sine wave generator here on my laptop. I'm testing this circuit with uh, the output from a program called True RTA. It's a spectrum analyzer and uh, waveform generator. Right now I have a 440 hertz signal running which is A440 and it's a sine wave and I'm running that through the output of the laptop into the input of this amplifier that's on the breadboard you see before you. I've got the oscilloscope leads hooked up to that on two channels and we can look at the input versus the output. Right now you can see the input on the screen and as I turn up the output you'll see the waveform generated and hear the sound. And it goes through some strange changes. This has to do with the way that it runs through the circuit and the capacitors and the way the potentiometer acts on it. And when it gets really loud, you'll see a strange shape in the waveform. Right there. That's, uh, you're seeing the capacitor on the output side there, affecting it. But basically there you can see how it's being amplified. Now let me take you through the circuit. Here's the schematic on my whiteboard. I like drawing schematics up on a whiteboard. It's easy to work with. You can erase things. So the LM386 is a small power amplifier that will run on 4 to 12 volts. It uh, doesn't take much. The uh, inputs are ground referenced and the output automatically biases to one half of the supply voltage. You can change the gain by uh, changing the capacitor and resistor combination between pins 1 and 8. You can just use a capacitor as well. I put a 10 microfarad between pins 1 and 8 here. There's also a decoupling capacitor on the power, 100 microfarad. There's a decoupling capacitor on the input by the uh, potentiometer 0 0.01 there's a couple more decoupling capacitors on the output a uh, 10 with a point four or a point four seven with a 10 ohm resistor and a 220 microfarad cap so if you want to do a bass boost you can add that to the circuit by simply adding a 10k resistor and a 0.33 microfarad capacitor between pins 1 and 5 there's not much to the parts list. You need a 10 ohm resistor, a 10k potentiometer, five different capacitors, and uh, a box to put it in, obviously, and um, a 9-volt battery. Pretty simple circuit. Let's build it. Here's the circuit on the breadboard, and I recommend, highly recommend, building your circuit first on a breadboard because it's much easier to troubleshoot if there's a problem you just get to move wires and pins around and you don't have to unsolder anything you can fully test your circuit here you can experiment try different value capacitors to see how it affects the signal and you'll learn a lot along the way so you can see everything right here in the middle of it all is the LM386 chip that you see sitting there and it all works as we saw earlier and now the thing to do is put it on a perf board and then we'll get it in an enclosure.
Yay, it's in the Altoids tin now. And uh, we'll take a closer look at things. I put some hot glue on the back of the circuit, uh, a few layers, and then I used a piece of silicone rubber to make it all flat, and that insulates it from the Altoids box. That's kind of one of the pain in the arses about using an Altoids tin. There's a couple of things that are a bit of a pain. Drilling holes in them is kind of hard. It's only about 28 gauge metal, maybe, at that most. So that's a little tricky. It tends to distort very easily. And you have to isolate everything from the uh, tin box. But otherwise, you know, they're cool. They're they're cheap. $1.99. you got an enclosure and you get to share some Altoids with your friends. Anyway, back to the circuit. Uh... What I did on the input and output was I put an eighth inch mini jack and a quarter inch jack. They're both mono. That's the input side. This is the output side over here. So you kind of have a bit of versatility on uh, in and out. And um, I changed the volume pot to something a little bit smaller that would fit in there. And that's right here. And then there's the on off switch. And I added an LED little green glowy LED so we can tell when it's turned on and not forget to turn it off and leave it sit idle. So the whole thing looks just like this. There it is turned on. And uh, now I'm going to connect it up and give you a little demo. Right, let's hook this up then. Uh, turn on the MP3 player here. And we'll plug that into our input. And I'm going to plug this little speaker I have in here to the output. And we'll turn the device on. And let's hit play and see what we've got here. And there we go. And turn the volume up. It was pretty loud. It was only a half watt amp, not bad all the way down so and this one goes to 11 by the way I just haven't put the number on there yet wait let me do that right now okay here it goes put all the way up it's right there Nigel would love it. Now what I want to show you is uh, the possibilities of a musical instrument running through this, so let's check that out. I have connected my bass guitar to the quarter inch input, and uh, you could take the quarter inch output and run it into a large amplifier and get some really cool sounds, but the LM386, when you drive it pretty hard, will go into a kind of a distortion mode and with a bass guitar you get a really cool funk sound and um, a kind of a fuzz bass thing so let me show you what that's like with my standard bass guitar demo melody <laughs> cool, huh? Well, if you run a guitar through it, it'll sound pretty screamy too. So, one more use for the little 386 half watt amplifier. I hope you uh, decide to build one because it's lots of fun. It's really easy. You could put one of these together in uh, an afternoon or an evening or two and uh, it'll do. you can do it for less than $20. And uh, you don't have to put it in an Altoids tin. You can put it in a plastic container. You can put it in anything. You put it in a cardboard box if you want to. You could put it in a soup can anything you want. So go build one. Have some fun. Thanks for watching Hack a Week TV. And uh, I'm going to play around now with my little teeny practice amp. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jam on some blues now and take you out with uh, a little blues riff. <laughs>